now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It's 507 on this Monday morning. Thanks for tuning in here. Launching you into the final week of March, the end of quarter one. Where did Q1 go? Man. Coming up uh, later in this program, we've got, uh, of course, Joe DeGeneva joining us at 7.05. We'll find out what he'll think happens today with that deadline for Trump handing over, you know, half a billion dollars in assets. 7.35, now Gardner Heritage Foundation on the news about Kate Middleton. And then 8.05, Tom Fitton will join us from Judicial Watch. I am Larry O'Connor. You, I know you. You're Good that, morning. You're that mom from the Heights. <laughs> It's Julie Gunlock. You had your big gala there yes. for your kids' school, yes. and everyone was happy. It was great. Good. Well, inspirational. Was it? It was. Were you inspired? Are you going to seize gonna be the nicer day today? This morning. You going to do a little carpe diem action? Are you going <laughs> to? That's it. I'm inspired. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go too. You know where I'm ready to go? Where? I'm ready to go to Virginia to get a margarita. Nice. And I'll just take it. And then you can it. drive home. Exactly. You know what? We we we. You know what? You know what? <laughs> I never like, re- that is my favorite Larry. I never you know realized that. I did. I know. That I wish I hadn't pointed it as out. As much as I do, you know what? You know what? Well, I say it when I'm being unfairly attacked, <laughs> which is often. So, so maybe I just say it when you're around. <laughs> but I am often unfairly attacked by Julie Gunlock and her entire extended family. Yes, and it yes. reaches a point where I feel like I need to defend myself, and so I say, "You know what? You know what?" And apparently, that's a thing. Um. <laughs> We've been saying about Governor Yunkin that he is sort of uh, really championing uh, the spirit of Virginia, if I may say. Yes. I believe that's his campaign slogan, isn't it? Yes. Uh, the spirit of Virginia, which is, you know, the oldest functioning colony here in America, the Jamestown colony. Uh, the idea of, of freedom of religion, freedom of property ownership, freedom of, you know, whatever rights that you were endowed with by God not to be infringed by the government. You know, the 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 colony that brought us Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and George Washington knows a thing or two about what this country is all about. And he has just signed a bill into law that really exemplifies that in a very meaningful way. <laughs> as of now, or well, not as of now, when this law goes into effect, um, House Bill 688 will now be an official law as of uh, July 1st. Um, wait, am I reading this right? The original temporary bill was due to expire July 1st, but now this extends it ad infinitum. As of now, yes. as of yesterday, officially, you can get a cocktail in Virginia and have it to go. I'm, I, uh, and on my way from Virginia, I stopped. Uh, this at morning? A, at a Duncan. <laughs> at a Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> and got a little spiked latte. Half a dozen chocolate devil's food and just give me a big gulp of tequila. That's right. I don't think that's technically exactly what you can do. Oh, and, and again, shoot. Th- this stems off of the pandemic where restaurants were struggling and so they were allowed temporarily to have these to-go cocktails. That was due to expire this year and Governor Yunkin has now extended this ad infinitum and you'll be able to get this just in time for yesterday, which was National Cocktail Day. Uh, it basically legalizes to-go cocktails and mixed wine. Mm. Why you would mix things with your wine, I'll I never know. That, I think it's like sangria. Or maybe some or sort seltzers, of frozen thing. Or, yeah, I, I guess know. people do. Fro- well, again, that would be frozen sangria, I think. I don't know. Don't screw with your wine. Drink wine yeah, by anyway, itself. Yeah, anyway, that's weird. But, yeah, but then whatever. go ahead and make a cocktail. It's fine. Uh, Senior Vice President and Head of the State Public Policy at the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States, Andy Deloney. I want to party with that guy. Yeah. Uh, praise Yunkin's decision on Thursday, explained that during the pandemic, cocktails to go were a critical source of revenue for many businesses, and now the increased convenience and stability they offer is permanent. We applaud the legislature and Governor Yunkin for supporting Virginia businesses so, and consumers by making cocktails to go permanent. Okay, so yay for this. Yes. Yay. Next okay. step. Go ahead. Awesome. But, but it's not enough for you, is it? No, You'll it's lush. not, because we still have prohibition <laughs> pr- practices in Virginia. I cannot go to a grocery store and buy alcohol yeah, the whole abc I, I thing mean, i'll the never whole, understand the, the liquor yeah and it's as if liquor is so much worse than beer and wine yeah. okay it's a matter of degrees right you you can have a small shot of you can't vodka f- and a glass of wine right. and you know what is it four ounce six ounces and then 
you know, or a beer. And it's all equal. And so they, they put liquors in this ABC store. It's wildly inconvenient. Mm-hmm. And instead of putting it in the grocery store, so you have to make multiple. T- hey, look, when you're dragging around three kids. You have to make a stop at the liquor store. It is not fun. But do you no, really it, need to make that stop? <laughs> yeah. Look, that's you a different show. You leave the kids in the driveway. That's a, hey, that's a different show. Anyway, the point is. Strapped into their car seats with the windows And then you leave them in the car. Everybody the gets angry. weather. But I needed my vodka. <laughs> okay, I knew this was going to go south. I knew it. I knew it. Okay, but listen. You're right. It is inconvenient. But uh, it's also a competition it's issue. It's a bit of a cartel right? thing. It is the a government. Complete, it's, doesn't the government basically price own Price controls? All of those? Yes, oh, it's yeah, price controlled. There's no competition. Yeah. Right? And also, they don't get sort of, for those who collect and who are interested in trying different right. things, there's no incentive to put in like a Japanese whiskey or some other rare. And ABC, every year, they do these events where they do sell really rare items. And I mean, the line is, it's ridi- it's a ridiculous spectacle. So yeah. we need to take this, this is great. I, I don't mean to, I don't mean to be negative here, but we need to dismantle the whole ABC sort of system. So uh, I, I agree with you. And then on the other end of the spectrum, a bunch of liberal Puritans uh, were were criticizing Youngkin, but this is so typical. But it they're fine matter. with with um with, with marijuana pot. being. Yeah. yeah, well, exactly. Well, one of the arguments was, oh, but you're against recreational pot. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I've ruined it. I've ruined it. You know what? Um, I was actually ten years ago. I was one of the voices for legalization. Who, yes, because Bill Buckley made a compelling case sure. before he passed away. The war on drugs is an utter failure. We've wasted too much money on it. People are going to do what they want to do. If they do it legally and in the privacy of their home, it takes the, the criminal element of it. I, I really was. I was like, sure. you know what? Let's do this. Let's get the guy. I don't think a big government telling you what you can and can't do with your body is ever the solution for anything. Um, but you know what? 10, 12, 15 years later, you look at how it's worked. It hasn't solved all those problems we were told it was going to solve. And, I, and I'm 100% willing to reexamine the legalization of pot question. Uh, and the idea of criticizing Yunkin for legalizing this, but he doesn't go so far as to well, let you, know, you get heroin problem, on your yeah, own. Yeah, my, my problem is more sort of these certain standards for certain sort of, you know, uh, sort of items. You, you have one set of stand, standards for alcohol. We have to, you know, but but yet you can you literally smell pot yes. on every street corner, and nobody seems to care. I right. mean, if you're going to regulate my alcohol to the point that you know there's zero competition, zero price changes, and zero uh, new products coming into the state, fine. But don't I don't want everything to smell like an ashtray. Although I, I have to say, I mean, because it's not legal in Virginia, I mean, the, the experience of being in Arlington or Alexandria and bar hopping or whatever, walking down the sidewalks in those areas where it is um, open and, and welcoming to pedestrian traffic, uh, it's very different than D.C. When you're in D.C., you smell pot everywhere. Oh, it's unbelievable. Absolutely everywhere. And I think that, that the difference is is stark yeah. in terms of where it's been legalized and where it hasn't. Uh, that's a, we, we applaud Governor Yunkin for some common sense here on the on the to-go. And of, and of course, everyone says, well, that just means people are going to drink or drive. People are drinking and driving now. They have right. been for quite some time. Just because that's something you don't want doesn't mean that you, you know, prohibit this. This makes sense. The next step for me. It's also good for restaurants. Of it's course. For bars. Well, and th- that's why my next step is, wouldn't it be great if you can go pub hopping um, down in Old Town? Yeah. And you can take your beverage with you from place to place. Huh. That's great. It's New, you very should New be Orleans. Able, it, exactly. Very mm-hmm. New Orleans, very Las Vegas. Yes. Like, and wait a second. <laughs> Maybe that's not something we should be striving I th- for. I think it really goes We're... with our colonial history. Although they probably, George Washington probably was stumbling around with, you know, a with liter of beer. whiskey, yeah. It's 515 WMA. Making sense of the roads because traffic doesn't always follow the pattern. Download the WMAL app to stream us for free. I'm just saying it's I like the idea, especially in the summertime, of being able to be out with friends. You go to a place, you get your drink, and then you move on to the next place. And you don't have to say, wait, let me finish this. I don't want to waste it. Are you a slow it. drinker? <laughs> well, compared to some of my friends, <laughs> I'm not the slowest. But, but you know, you've had that situation before. It's like, hey, come I've on, we're all going to the next. i situation. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, I, not all of us just have <clears throat> shots, Julie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And if there's something very festive about that, and, and there's and just certain yes. areas where it would be cool, Old Town would be a great place yeah. to go do that. Oh, were, downtown were there, Annapolis were there would be a nice place to do. Pedestrian friendly areas. Yes, exactly. Yes. Although, 
<laughs> like I said, maybe it's not the most the highest of municipal ambitions to say we should be just like Bourbon Street. <laughs> Have you, you know, I'm an early riser. I have to be, right? Well, You're course, an early yeah. riser now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in New Orleans, uh, gosh, it was the, when was it? Um, it must have been 2019. It was right before the pandemic, I think. Yeah, it was. I was in, I was in New Orleans in 2019 with mm-hmm. my brothers. We did a weekend there. And because I'm an early riser, I'm up before everyone else, like just I at sunrise. Oh. And so I said, oh, this is a good time to go stroll Bourbon Street. Smells real Street. great, doesn't it? Oh my God. <laughs> you, you don't want to see. It doesn't smell like beignets. Bourbon Street at five in the morning. Oh, my God, the a, hoses. They have a Zamboni. They do. They have a Zamboni yes. like you get at the at the uh, um, Capitals games that like drive up and down the street just sanitizing everything and cleaning yeah. it all up for and the next And, you know, despite day. Larry's trying to suggest that I do shots all the time, I actually uh, was... <laughs> I it, I had no idea. I was like, why are, are these shopkeepers out with all these hoses? Yeah. Like I didn't understand. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, that's th- that's throw up on the ground. Well, yeah. it's funny. I was talking to one of the shop owners. I said, so how much do you have to focus on, you know, cleaning up the vomit every day? And he said, well, it's not just vomit, right? The, <laughs> that's just <laughs> basically. <laughs> Everything that can excrete from your body it when smells. you lose complete and total social or muscle control yes. basically expels yes. when you're in Bourbon it's, Street. It's, it smells pretty bad in the morning. But it's funny because whenever I'm in Louisiana or in New Orleans, I yeah. do the same thing. I get up early. I do a big walk. Go um, get your chicory coffee. Yes. yes. But it is, yeah, it's quite a scene. <laughs> the cleanup. So maybe maybe that's not the <laughs> highest of goals for Old Town in Annapolis, I guess. Maybe but, not. But but still, it it's there is something culturally wonderful about that when you're able to just walk around with a to go cup and just be a grown up, be an that's adult. Right. Yeah, it's like walking around your neighborhood from from that's house right. to house when you have a block party. And <laughs> boy, am I ready for the summer! <laughs> <I know. laughs> I'm really thirsty now. It's five twenty one. All right, on the face of it, this might sound silly. But there's an announcement coming out of the test kitchens at Chick-fil-A where their master chefs have been working on, wait for it, pizzas. Oh. Chick-fil-A pizzas. Really? And don't laugh because I remember when they started, well, I don't remember it directly, but I've heard that when they started announcing they were going to do a breakfast People were making fun of them, mm. and now have you the little Chick Fil A breakfast oh, sandwiches uh, with the sweet? We, uh, how many mm-hmm. dozens of those oh do you get gosh. for the kids? The, right, the kids love them. Well, they're working on these pizzas now because they say they've noticed customers getting creative with Chick Fil A ingredients on pizzas at home. Who does this? Well, there's so, all these hacks. Yeah. Like oh, you're and then they to put the it mac on TikTok. and cheese and put the nuggets in it, and then right. you put some put the buffalo sauce on and. Yeah, there's all these And then put things. it on social media and everyone yes. says, that looks great. And yes. nobody actually eats and it. And then, well, no, they, they eat do. it. They do. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, apparently people have been taking their Chick-fil-A stuff and putting it on their pizzas at home and, mm. and making that. So now they, here, talk me through this. They've got the Chick-fil-A experience on a pizza. It's a, it's dough, mozzarella cheese, and then the Chick-fil-A nuggets like chopped up into bits and then drizzled with Chick-fil-A sauce covered in pickles. Okay. Let me explain. Anything that Chick-fil-A produces sounds great it's worth it this sounds delicious yes i worry about mission creep stick to sandwiches well that's what a lot of people worry about that yes. and when you go there now you know they've got they've got the healthy options they've got the grilled yes. chicken they've got the salads they got the soups yes. they got a lot of things they got a lot on. so i don't know a buffalo ranch pizza pie mozzarella cheese topped with seasoned to perfection sliced chick-fil-a nuggets buffalo sauce creamy house-made ranch dressing drizzles and a dusting of a zesty lemon pepper seasoning. Okay, I have a question. Yes. What is your order at Chick-fil-A? I have a very specific order. Um, it depends on how hungry I am. I will usually get, if I'm hungry, like if we're going because I was like, oh my God, I got to go to Chick-fil-A. You get I'll the get sandwich. The, I get the spicy uh, chicken. chicken deluxe uh-huh. with oh. the waffle fries. Oh. And then I also the get- The deluxe has cheese on it, right? Yes, it gets okay. the jalapeno uh, cheese, lettuce, uh-huh. tomato. Okay. And then I get the, um, and then a Chick-fil-A sandwich by itself on the side. Oh, God, it's nice you. to be a man. I'm real hungry. Yeah. Um, and my sauces are uh, sweet sriracha and buffalo. Nice. Combined. That's yeah. hot. You, yeah. get, you like a lot of space. How about you? Mine is uh, the grilled chicken nuggets uh-huh. and uh, and a kale salad. Oh, because you're healthy right yeah, now. Yeah, well, I have to be healthy. Yeah. But honestly, Before that, what would it have been? It probably would have been the same thing. I, 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 Spicy honest, chicken is well, really good. I don't eat a lot of fried chicken sandwiches, but I will mm. tell you that kale salad with the chick- grilled chicken nuggets is the bomb. I'll try that. Yeah. Um, they also have, of course, a cheese pizza, a pepperoni pizza, 
uh, and a pepperoni pizza round, which is a twist on the classic calzone. Is it going to be chicken pepperoni? Meant to be a round stuffed with, no, 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 they're going to have actual, oh. yeah, fine, they're having oh. a non-chicken item, I know. So, th- listen, th- that's all good news that they're trying it. I have even better news. There's only one place on planet Earth to get these. It's at their test kitchen in College Park, Maryland. No. It's right here. Let's go. I think we need to do some sort of special tasting here in studio, right? Yeah, we need to buddy up to the We Chick-fil-A want Chick-fil-A people. pizzas, and we want to try them on the air, and then we'll give you our, yeah, our ruling. we'll give you our... All right. Our opinion. Coming up, we have the news from Kate Middleton, and we'll discuss it next. WMAL FM, Woodbridge, Washington, a cumulus media station. Making sense of the news. News Talk 105.9. WMAL. News. And streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 537 now, chugging along on a Monday morning. Coming up at 705, Joe DeGeneva will join us at 735. Now Gardner Heritage Foundation. He uh, sits in the Margaret Thatcher throne over mm. there. And so he's going to give us his take on the royal family. And at 805, Tom Fitton, Judicial Watch. It's Larry O'Connor alongside Julie Gunlock. Good morning. You're a bit of an Anglophile, are I you am. not? You, have, you, you and Patrice both love the royal family for yeah. different reasons yeah. and in different ways. Sure. And so the news campaign, you know, I, I feel bad because we were having fun with this whole thing because it was a conspiracy theory. And conspiracy theories are just fun and yeah. funny. Yeah. And the rumors about the girlfriend with the... Look, we blame Megan for it, so it's okay. This is all Megan's fault. It's all Megan's but fault. But we actually did get the final statement, or not final, <laughs> I should say, excuse me. <laughs> use that word. Official definitive statement go. from Kate Middleton she took to social media and delivered a video directly. Do you think it was her, first of all, in the video? Oh, my God, Larry. Yes, my God. And and honestly, I think it is important to say that we we yes. sort of recognized that this was probably very serious. We Even did. when, we, this when is the, how we, with yeah. all the jokes aside, we said, you know what, I think something serious is going on here because I don't think that this family is going to just, you know, randomly take a couple months off. And I, I remember I said specifically... I think there's something going on. Right. I think she's really sick. Yeah, you had actually speculated about um, uh, some sort of fibroid well, uh, issues in her abdomen or stomach. Yeah, and but... I, I thought maybe, you know, diverticulitis or Crohn's. Right. I thought there was something significantly wrong because those are very serious conditions. Right. And so um, I'm not, re- I wasn't really surprised by... It, it was the half-handed way of just sort of trying to hide the news and then the, the f- obviously faked Photoshop and this, the various I, things. I, th- I think these people have tried very hard to have some semblance of a private life. And I think right. they thought they could kind of keep going in that way. And I think they were I, also worried about panic with when dad, the king, yes, has cancer. I agree. And now we heard from Kate Middleton that she, Catherine, the princess of Wales, also has cancer. I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you personally for all the wonderful messages of support and for your understanding whilst I've been recovering from surgery. It has been an incredibly tough couple of months for our entire family, but I've had a fantastic medical team who have taken great care of me, for which I'm so grateful. In January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I'm now in the early stages of that treatment. Uh, as well as her father-in-law, the king. So that's why, and so everyone's sort of missing an action in the royal family, at least the go-to players, right? Yes, and, the, and King Charles did set it up so that it would be sort of those four members of the royal family um, he, his wife, and William and Kate, that would be sort of the leaders mm-hmm. of, you know, the working royals. After um, Harry and Meghan and obviously did what Sophie, they did. Yeah, well, yeah. But in the other news, did you see that Meghan is launching a new podcast? Really? On what a pain in the butt it's been to deal with Catherine while my, she has. My trauma. How hard it's been. Yes, to exactly. Deal with Catherine Me- Megan, having cancer. Megan's new Netflix documentary, yeah. My Trauma Dealing with Kate Middleton's Cancer Diagnosis. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't look good for her. Because, you know, it, one of the things that. Doesn't look good for Megan? What, yeah, I mean, look, one of the things that people say is, you know, high stress and, you know, disruptions and, you know, sort of emotional distress. Uh, can contribute to people becoming unhealthy, and I, you know, I, I, I do think that this family has been through an awful lot the last couple of years. Well, according to 
Well, not to mention losing the queen. Well, I know. So it sort of yes. kept all of them together and everything. Um, according to People Magazine, people.com, Meghan and Prince Harry privately reached out to Kate Middleton and Prince William after this cancer announcement. It, you know how private it was? It was so private that I'm reading about it in yeah, People Magazine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Of course. What came first, reaching out or, or the press release? Calling them to say, we're people reaching magazine. out. <laughs> so gross. Or did people call and say, hey, if you're, oh, yeah, we've reached out. Quick, text them. Yeah, exactly. Text them something. The thi- text them a sad yeah, emoji it, it, or the little boo-boo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Little boo-boo emoji. But I will say, I will say on the uh, sort of, I've, I've been reading about this over the weekend and this, she mentioned the word preventative chemotherapy. I think, and I've read some of the what some of the medical, not her doctors, obviously, but right. some people in the medical profession have have said this indicates they found cancer very early. This is, you know, chemotherapy to sort of, if if you will, sort of just an insurance policy, right. just to make sure that it's fully gone. So that's good news. It is. There is something about a personal st- tragedy that is public that Kate Middleton is experiencing here, the Princess of Wales. Uh, where other people feel like they need to make it about themselves. We mentioned uh, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. They put out a statement, uh, an official public statement through their publicist that said, we wish health and healing for Kate and the family and hope they are able to do so privately and in peace. We will elaborate further on our thoughts in a special (laughs) three-hour Oprah Winfrey interview. Focused specifically on how we are dealing with it, right? It's like that sort of. You can just—they had to put out a statement, of course. But, yeah. Um, yeah. But the, but the, so that's fine, and they're literally members of the family. That's their their sister-in-law, for God's mm-hmm. sake, and well, they're they're. Well, it is. I, mean, I you know. know. But then there's over here. Like we Americans have a very awkward relationship with the royal family. Like here, I'm a dope, and I'm still making jokes about it just yeah, because yeah. I don't know why it just makes me feel like yeah. a patriot. Well, because to we make don't fun care of about we, them. Uh, yes, yes, I know exactly. Yes. So um, <laughs> I hate to let's we'll be bipartisan about this. Sure. On both sides of the political aisle, we saw some embarrassing reactions yes. to this. First, Casey DeSantis, the first lady of Florida, wife of Ron DeSantis, who famously had a bout with cancer uh-huh. herself a couple of years ago. Um, she took to X and reposted the Catherine video and then said, huh, from one mom to another, you've got this. If I can beat it, so can you. What? Have oh. faith. Stay strong. Fight like hell. We're praying for you. And again, I think her heart was in the right place. I know. But oh. it's like she had to remind the world. It's like, hey, remember my cancer? This is why the phrase thoughts and prayers really works. Just keep yes. it to that. You're yes. in my, thoughts, You're in and my thoughts and prayers. You're in my thoughts and prayers. Okay. Um, and I, I tend to do this, too. It's like if somebody, if a friend of mine is going through tragedy, I'm either going to joke about it. Yes. Depending on what, like if Kurt Schlichter suddenly gets cancer, I am going to make fun of him yeah, like of nobody's course. business because he right. would do the same to me and I right. would expect no less. Right. But then there's other friends who's like, the only way I can relate to it is is like say, oh, yeah, you know, my puppy died of cancer. Right. It's like, I, I don't know why, but I have to make it about like, like I understand what you're going through, even though I have no idea what you're going through. Right? It, it is. But it's 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 one thing. And in, in like maybe you face this, but you see them for the first time and you say something awkward. It's right. another thing to type out. Exactly. You got this. Yeah. Uh, stay strong. If I fight could, like hell. If, if I, I can, beat it, you I mean, can it's just it. okay. I, but it gets worse. I know, but one yes. with I, I've always hated these kinds of, you know, you've got this and like fight like hell, that kind of stuff. Because it's it's can really you give us in, in many, if also you ever in many get cancer. cases with cancer, it's yeah. not a matter of like, oh, they died because they didn't fight hard enough. Right. Or the suggestion they, they is, died because they didn't got this. Right. right? I, I guess hate she that didn't kind of stuff. get it. Look, yeah, exactly. I mean, cancer is a very, <laughs> I have to say, is a very serious disease. Right. And when you talk about it like a broken arm, you know, just stay strong. Right. right? And do your physical therapy right. and you'll be fine. Uh, right. Anyway, I don't know. The I don't only like appropriate kind of... response is, so, especially if it's someone you don't know. You don't know. Exactly. Is to just say, you're in my prayers. Your children are in my yes. prayers. I pray and, for your comfort and, and, and healing. And, right. That's and it. I, I hope that the, you don't suffer too right. much so, through this process because it's going to be awful. This is, so this if you is... ever get cancer, God forbid. Mm-hmm. Y- so you don't want the whole. If I'm, anybody I'm, hands me a pink ribbon, <laughs> I swear to God. Or if anyone is, if anybody says you got this, I will murder them. I'm gonna run a 5K in your oh honor. Oh my god! I if I hear Susan Coleman, I 
just just stay away from me. Seriously. I will be the only one dying. Literally send me your thoughts and prayers. Yes, exactly. I will kill you. I will drag I will you down You give me, me a t-shirt that's pink that says, like, I got this. Or a lot of people like the F cancer. Oh. I will I'm lose I'm going to recruit mind. 40 others to all do a walk with your name on our also, t-shirts. Also, don't, no food. You all can't cook. Yeah. All right. Can we make fun of a Democrat, please? That's what we're here yes, for. Yes, let's do that. Senator uh, Chris Murphy of Connecticut. So he finds out the Kate Middleton story. And he took to Twitter and outdid everybody. <laughs> he said he reposted the video yes. and the post of Kate Middleton's video and then said, I can confirm this. I was supposed to be on CNN at 2 p.m. to talk about the anniversary of the Affordable Care Act oh. and the millions of lies it saved. But my interview has been bumped by this much more important oh, topic. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. That, that is the word. Yeah, this much more. I love how he's like, but I've been bumped by this. At least he admits it's a much more important topic. But really, well, he's I think like, he was being no, sarcastic. exactly, exactly. It's like, really, we care about this yes, instead pop of culture instead of Obamacare's anniversary. Ugh, he has deleted that now. Um, I I love one of one of the responses was she was announcing her battle with cancer. Sorry, you couldn't talk about Obamacare. Right. By the way, which is frankly, she because you... of Obamacare, how many more people have died of cancer? I was going to say, should, they've got they've kind of related. They've got Obamacare on steroids over in England, and something tells me she is bypassing the National Health Service. Yes, yes, and utilizing private physicians flown in from I don't know a country that doesn't have socialized health care to handle this. But no, it's fine. I'm sorry. This, my, we should have all replied to Chris Murphy. Thoughts and prayers with you today, <laughs> Senator. Yes. You got this. Sorry you missed your CNN hit, but you got this. 553.